This program contains material of a disturbing nature. Viewer discretion is advised. 30 minutes later, they reach the clinic. She's absolutely covered and drenched in sweat and in vomit. And they took Evelyn's vitals. Then they definitely noticed right away that her breathing was labored. And I think because of the vomiting, the doctor simply started at the very ground level. It was being treated like some type of stomach virus or stomach issue. But what they were telling me just did not match what my gut was telling me. I did not believe that it was a stomach issue. Still, the doctor gives Evelyn an anti-nausea shot. The doctor then leaves the room, and the family hopes the medication will take effect. Evelyn was lying there on the table, and her eyes are just clenched closed, just very visibly uncomfortable and in pain. I was very worried. 30 minutes later, the doctor returns to assess Evelyn's progress. We're trying to insist this is not something with her stomach. This is not normal. That shot has not done anything. Evelyn is continuing to vomit. Something else is wrong. And the doctor didn't know what to do with her. That was frustrating that the doctor, the professional, doesn't know what's going on. And so I was completely terrified about what the next 15 minutes might hold for her. That was probably the hardest part for me, was just thinking about how much pain she was in and knowing that there was nothing we could do. You know, she's just hurting, and it's clear that she's in a lot of pain, and there was nothing I could do to make it stop. I was simply feeling that we need answers. If we can't find the answers here, we need to go where we can. Ashley and Jim leave the clinic and drive Evelyn to the nearest hospital. There, pediatric emergency physician Dr. David Ruby takes on the case. When Evelyn arrived at the hospital, she was in extreme pain. She was almost uncontrollable. At that point, she had gone from kind of the consistent crying she was doing to now like a screaming pain crying. <laughs> I, you know, I, I've had, I couldn't handle seeing her in even more pain. Dr. Ruby gives Evelyn a physical examination. She's having muscle contractions and uncontrolled eye movements. Also, she had snake-like movements of the tongue, up and down and vibrating. Based on this and the rapid onset of her symptoms, Dr. Ruby makes a startling diagnosis. She had a scorpion sting. That was quite alarming. Scorpion venom is coursing through Evelyn's bloodstream, spreading neurotoxins that attack the cells of her nervous system, shredding them apart, and radiating pain from her finger all the way across her body. As the immune system produces an inflammatory response, it leads to her vomiting, difficulty breathing, and overwhelming pain. Everything that Evelyn was going through was scary. I definitely went into panic mode. What makes scorpion venom so potent is that it disrupts the body's nerve cells. This can lead to respiratory failure, paralysis, and cardiac arrest in just a few hours. Second to snakes, scorpions kill more humans than any other venomous animal in the US. Evelyn's condition was serious to critical. In young children of small size, such as Evelyn, scorpion stings can be deadly. The worst fear was, was losing her. We didn't know what kind of reactions little ones can have, and it's scary. She used to shut down because she's in so much pain. She can't open her eyes because she's in so much pain. So that was, uh, that was really hard to think about. With Evelyn on the verge of death, doctors must give her antivenom. But when they try to put in the IV, 
there's another problem. Evelyn did not particularly enjoy the IV in her hand and was able to wrangle it loose. I was terrified, absolutely frightened. I had no idea what was about to happen. The nurses forcibly re-administered the IV to secure it down a little tighter and took the, the saline bag and gave it a little more pressure to increase the flow just to get the medicine administered. After maybe five minutes or so of doing that, she was able to calm down enough that she fell asleep. In the ICU, Evelyn lies motionless. Jim and I were just sitting there basically waiting for that time to go by. I felt like I was holding my breath, just waiting to see what was going to happen next. But after an hour, they notice an encouraging sign. She opened her eyes and, and looked at me. I hadn't seen her eyes for hours. So that moment of her looking at me was huge. I felt like, OK, she's going to be OK. She was playing peekaboo with the nurses. It's, it's almost like nothing had happened at all. There are more than 1,500 species of scorpions worldwide. The most dangerous scorpion in the US is the bark scorpion. The species is most common in the southwest United States, primarily in the state of Arizona. Bark scorpions tend to prefer dark crevices. In the home, scorpions typically lurk in bathrooms, closets, and food storage areas. Kind of playing it back. I think that the scorpion was inside the bowl that she was stirring. A few hours later, doctors send Evelyn home. But in the aftermath, her parents, Jim and Ashley, make some important changes to the family routine. Life after scorpion is definitely a lot more cautious. I check her playroom before she goes in every time. Today, Evelyn has made a complete recovery from her venomous infection. Evelyn is great, but we have instilled in her a, a healthy respect for anything that might look like an insect. I thank God for her every day that she's OK. She knows how much we love her, and we definitely show her that every day. In the US each year, Around 100 people die as a result of having been stung by a scorpion. Those living in areas where scorpions are prevalent should take particular care when doing yard work or camping. In the home, closets should be kept tidy and trash should be kept outside the home as this can attract insects that scorpions prey on. 